You only focus on your little home business and don't bother with the housework. And so my mother-in-law's regular snide remarks began again. I'm Susan, a 32-year-old web designer. I live with my husband, John, and his mother in our family home, which used to be John's childhood home. I was employed at a company before I got married, but I decided to go independent and work from home as a web designer after tying the knot. Most of my work comes from referrals from the company I used to work for, from clients who liked my design. They didn't want to lose a valuable resource like me, so they keep sending work my way. This setup is beneficial for both of us. I save on commuting time, and I had also wanted to properly manage my household duties after marriage. Both my former employer and I are satisfied with this arrangement. However, my live-in mother-in-law doesn't seem to find it amusing that I'm working. She's old-fashioned and often says, It's common sense for a wife to become a full-time housewife and support her husband once she's married. It's different from those old days. Most households have both partners working now. John tries to appease her. But you're earning the money we're living on. She needs to handle the housework properly, she retorts, seemingly unconvinced. Your wife's not earning much with that home business of hers, is she? Mother-in-law doesn't seem to understand my job and always refers to it as a home business. I feel like I'm managing the housework well in between my work, but she's discontented because my way of working is different from the full-time housewife she imagines. Maybe to her, who deeply cares for her only son, I'm the wicked woman who stole her precious son. She's been throwing sarcastic remarks at me since the beginning of our marriage. She seems to dislike everything I do. John told me that she's been relying more on him since his father passed away about five years ago. While he does seem annoyed, he also seems happy to be needed by his mother. Our home, situated in a residential area, was purchased by John's father about 30 years ago. The remaining mortgage was paid off with his life insurance, and the house is now in his mother's name. It's just the right size for the three of us, and it even has a room for me to work in, which is a big help. My mother-in-law has been living here for 30 years and seems to have many friends in the neighborhood who often come to visit. When her friends come over, I have to interrupt my work to serve them tea and snacks. When these women of her age gather, they often start talking about the issues they have with their daughters-in-law. My daughter-in-law always runs back to her parents' house at the slightest issue. She's here only about half the year. My daughter-in-law spends money like water. My son is having a hard time. We even had debt collectors coming. It was terrible. Listening to these conversations from my workspace, I can't help but chuckle. They're all trying to outdo each other on how bad their daughters-in-law are. They never have anything good to say about them. The daughter-in-law here is amazing, managing both her work and the housework. When one friend praises me, my mother-in-law doesn't seem pleased. She's not doing anything great with her work. It's just like a little home business. I wonder how much she's earning. Huh. She intentionally says it loudly enough for me to hear. Really? My daughter-in-law spends all the money she makes from her part-time job on herself, one friend shared. In response, another friend said, The money my wife earns is hers, and the money her husband earns is for all of us. Everyone burst into laughter at this. Things weren't like that in our day, my mother-in-law began launching into one of her usual tales. I put on my headphones to drown her out. I've heard these stories countless times and am tired of them. Even worse, they often disrespect modern wives and I can't bear to listen. I block out the outside noise and focus on my work. One day, John announced he wanted to get a new car. I've been thinking about getting a new car. Is that okay? He asked casually during dinner. Why do you need your wife's permission to buy a car? My mother-in-law snapped. John hurriedly tried to placate her. Well, it's a car for all of us. I can't just decide on my own, can I? Indeed, buying a car is a big decision that shouldn't be made alone. Still, my mother-in-law wasn't satisfied and continued to argue with him. You're the only one with a driver's license, so you should buy whatever car you want. My poor husband who usually does whatever his mother tells him to, looked at me helplessly. You can decide, I said, throwing him a lifeline. Don't constantly ask your wife's opinion. Just decide for yourself. 
John always checks with me or his mother about everything. It's good that he's not selfish, but it's a bit frustrating how indecisive he is. His father, my father-in-law, was the type of man who decided everything on his own. And my mother-in-law often complained about it. Growing up witnessing such dynamics, John believes it's wrong to be too assertive. On the other hand, my mother-in-law, who grew up with a domineering husband, believes that's how a husband should be. My mother-in-law's dissatisfaction with John's constant need for approval is directed at me. Susan is always nagging John. That's why he's become like this. She blames me. I was taken aback and didn't know what to say. Yeah, Susan is always complaining. That's why I can't make decisions on my own. John joined in, blaming me. But I didn't say anything. I defended myself, but it was pointless. John always takes his mother's side. We've been married for about two years, but he's never defended me in front of his mother. When she's not around, he apologizes, saying, I'm sorry, you're really the most important to me, but I can't trust him anymore. He initially seemed considerate of me, but he never stands up for me. I'm starting to wonder if I need to reconsider our relationship. I'm worried about whether I can continue living with John. Kindness and indecisiveness are different things. I wish he would stand up to his mother. About a month later, John's new car arrived. The smell of a new car is the best. Let's all go for a drive on my next day off, he said gleefully. His excitement was infectious, and even my mother-in-law seemed happy. That's a nice car. It must have been expensive, right? But it's okay since it's coming out of your salary, right? My husband didn't respond to her question instead enjoying fiddling around with various parts of the car. I was dumbfounded as I looked at that expensive looking new car. There's certainly a limit, even though I said he could do as he pleased. My husband came into the house in high spirits. I confronted him. How much did that car cost? He answered nonchalantly, $60,000. Seeing my shocked face, my husband continued curiously, but you said I could buy any car I wanted, didn't you? My mother-in-law quickly took my husband's side. That's right. You left it up to John, so don't complain now. I did leave everything up to him at the time, but I wanted him to consider our financial situation as well. Where is that kind of money coming from? I asked my husband, ignoring my mother-in-law's comment. Well, um, I'm paying with a loan, he stammered. My mother-in-law shouted in his voice, Susan, don't complain. You're not the one paying. I don't know if she was angry because I ignored her or because she didn't like what I said to my husband, but she glared at me with a fierce expression. You're a disagreeable daughter-in-law, always complaining about something, even though you're living off John's salary. My mother-in-law retorted with an unusually harsh tone. I have a job too, I shot back. My mother-in-law didn't stay silent. What are you talking about? You're not earning much with your part-time job. John makes $5,000 a month. She looked down on me as if mocking me. I was about to say, that's my salary. But when I looked for my husband, he had disappeared into his room. I've been patient until now, but I can't take it anymore. I want a daughter-in-law like you to leave as soon as possible. My mother-in-law went so far as to say that. I had been patient too. I didn't feel like discussing my salary. It seemed ridiculous and I didn't care anymore. I was frustrated with my mother-in-law's comment, but I was dumbfounded by my husband's attitude. Wasn't it my husband who caused this argument in the first place? His usual indecisiveness had come out again. Okay, I'll leave then, I said, and went to my home office, grabbed my laptop and other necessary items, and left the house. I'll come back for the rest of my stuff later, I told my mother-in-law who was glaring at me with a scary face. My husband remained holed up in his room. The next time you come here, make sure you sign the divorce papers. My still angry mother-in-law yelled at me. Did you hear me, you useless lady? It was the first time I had seen my mother-in-law use such rough language, and I was surprised. I ignored her and stormed out of my in-law's house. Was she angry because I said I would leave as she asked? Or was she angry because I confronted my husband about the money? Either way, it was a fact that I wanted to leave this house as soon as possible. Having stormed out of my husband's parents' house, 
I went back to my parents' house for the time being. What happened all of a sudden? My mother at home was surprised. I don't know what happened, but you can stay here as long as you need to. My dad seemed to understand the situation by my unusual expression. I never heard from my husband afterwards. The man who used to treasure me before our marriage is no longer around. I can only think that I was foolish not to see a husband who only listens to his mother-in-law. I was feeling better after talking to my parents about what happened at my husband's house. It calmed me down. You don't have children. It's better to divorce sooner rather than later, my mom told me, and I agreed. I have a job, so I wouldn't be inconvenienced in my life. On the weekend, my father helped me move my belongings out of my husband's house. My husband was nowhere to be seen, and my mother-in-law didn't appear from her room. I called out in front of my husband's room. Thank you for everything. Could you sign the divorce papers? I slid the divorce papers under the door. I've signed. Is this okay? A curt voice of my husband came from behind the door along with the divorce papers. I was sad that our marriage ended in such a way. Without saying anything to my mother-in-law, I left my husband's house. It was a house where I had lived for about two years, but I didn't have many good memories. I went straight to the city hall and submitted the divorce papers. I wanted to settle it quickly if it could be done with a piece of paper. After the divorce, I stayed at my parents' house and continued my work there. I was thinking of renting a room and living alone, but my mother told me, Please, stay here for a while. It's much safer than living alone. My father was also against me living alone. John and his mom are strange. They might come to your house. I thought that wouldn't happen, but I felt at ease being with my parents at home. Fortunately, I can work from anywhere, so I decided to live at home for a while. About two months had passed, and I had almost forgotten about my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law when a call came from an unknown number. Who could that be? Maybe it's a wrong number. Thinking that, I didn't answer the call. However, the calls kept coming. Reluctantly, I heard my ex-husband's voice. Why didn't you answer the phone sooner? He seemed quite flustered. Well, it's an unknown number, and besides, we're not related anymore, so I'm going to hang up. As I was about to hang up, he quickly said, Wait, wait, I can't connect my smartphone. Why is that? He sounded desperate. I wouldn't know. You should check with your phone company. As I replied, I realized something. Are you by any chance? not depositing money into your bank account when we were married i was depositing money from my salary into the account for paying public utilities his salary was also transferred there but it was such a small amount that it wasn't enough he was selling health food products but his basic salary was low because it was a commission system people who get a lot of orders seem to make a lot of money but he didn't do well he was receiving almost only the basic salary, so only a few hundred dollars was transferred to the account. I had been depositing money into the payment account at the end of every month, but for the past three months, it was only his salary. The argument about the car and me leaving the house was in the middle of the month. The payment for that new car might have already started. My ex-husband on the other end of the phone fell silent. I've been managing all this with my own salary. From now on, you'll have to figure it out on your own, I told him. I wanted to say, serves you right, but held back and hung up the phone. My ex-husband probably never told his mother how much he earned. His mother didn't realize that ever since our marriage, we'd mostly been living off my salary. John must have been too embarrassed to admit that he earned less than his wife. I've heard that utilities like electricity and water are not easy to shut off. The first thing that gets cut off is usually the cell phone service, I learned. A few days later, on a quiet weekend morning, the doorbell at my house rang loudly. When my dad answered, he was arguing with someone at the front door. We have nothing to do with you anymore, so leave. Seeing my normally calm father so angry, I knew something was wrong, and my mom and I headed towards the entrance. I just want to see Susan, a voice demanded. Hearing my ex-mother-in-law's voice made my heart pound, just as my dad had predicted. She'd come all the way to our home. When she saw me, my ex-mother-in-law started yelling at me with a terrifying expression on her face. 
Because you stopped depositing money into the account, the electricity and water got cut off. My parents and I were taken aback. What did she mean, the electricity and water got cut off? Just then, my ex-husband arrived, desperately trying to intervene. Mom, stop it. This has nothing to do with Susan. But my ex-mother-in-law shook off John's hand and continued her tirade. John makes $5,000. Why would the electricity and water get cut off? You're mistaken. I'm the one who makes $5,000. I corrected her, finally able to share what I hadn't been able to say before. My ex-mother-in-law looked surprised at my words, then turned to John. That's right. It wasn't my salary. It was all Susan's. He admitted, his shoulders slumping. Huh? How can you earn so much with a part-time job? My ex-mother-in-law looked at me as if I was a fox who had tricked her. I've told you before, it's not a part-time job. It's a real job, I replied. The color drained from my ex-mother-in-law's face. How much does John make? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. About $500 net, he answered, his voice almost disappearing. There was a moment of silence. Then my ex-mother-in-law said something unbelievable. Susan, can't you come back? The whole leave us thing was a joke. She begged with a low posture, reminding me of someone trying to butter me up. What are you talking about? I'm divorced. I have nothing to do with you two anymore. Even though I firmly declined, my ex-mother-in-law continued to plead in an overly familiar way. You can just remarry John. If we start the paperwork now, it'll be fine. My dad stepped in when I was too flabbergasted to respond. We're done with you. If you don't leave right now, we'll call the police. At the sound of my dad's intimidating voice, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law hurriedly left. If you show up again, I'm calling the cops right away. My father delivered a final warning as the mother and son wobbled away. What a bunch of uncouth people. My mother was astounded, but my father seemed even more furious. I'm glad you got out of that marriage, Susan. A while after that incident, I got an update about the ex-family from one of John's friends. In the end, John had sold his family home and land and moved into an apartment with his mother. The new car he barely used had been sold too and the proceeds from the land sale had gone to pay off the remaining loan. He'd cleared his debts, but instead of settling down to work, John had blown all his money on gambling. Having squandered the money from selling his family home, he'd disappeared without a trace. His mother, left behind, had developed dementia and been placed in a care facility. I'm doing well in my job now and living alone. I've recently started dating a man I met through work. He's understanding about me being divorced and is very dedicated to his job. He's definitely not the kind of guy who relies on his wife's money to make expensive purchases like John was. We're not engaged yet, but we both feel like we could marry each other.